need to start talking? Okay. Yeah, I think it started uh, recording, so. Yeah, and just to let everyone know, we are recording the uh, presentation here. Okay, I think whenever you're ready, Mario. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Kendra, for the for the introduction and the possibility to connect with, with you all there. Um, this is something pruning related, but I thought could be nice to share. It's a more recent development, the way how we have been moving from long pruning to short pruning techniques and how we got here. So hopefully it's gonna make sense to you at the end of the talk. Uh, is, this is something that is currently happening. Many New York growers are still learning. Uh, in New York, in the Mid-Atlantic region, it's a different kind of concept that we have been trying to bring to the industry. Uh, how or why we transition from long to short pruning? Um, I think so we have limb renewal issues, a significant amount of limb renewal issue in the way how we were doing things in the past especially with weaker cultivars. Uh, we start bringing new pruning practices through the grafting process that we have in our industry uh, that has been a significant amount of grafting. Uh, the grafting boom is going down this year. Uh, it's less than the last three, four, five years that we have had from all cultivar to new, more profitable cultivars. Uh, we also develop new pruning practices uh, by adopting a more efficient kind of tree nursery production method that we have called the grow through production method. And by doing that also force us to start pruning in a different way, the way how we prune the trees in the nurseries. And definitely the way how we start incorporating the amount of mechanical pruning that have been heavily adopted in, in, in our orchards. Uh, I should say that perhaps more than 50% of the high density apple fruit, uh, apple orchards are being mechanically pruned at some moment, whether it's in the dormant season or during the so uh, during the during the summer. And that doesn't mean that we're not pruning manually. We're doing a, even a better job uh, by pruning manually uh, those orchards that where we have incorporated mechanical pruning. And uh, all the above changes led us to manage a narrower canopy, like I mentioned there, with a short pruning techniques instead of for longer pruning techniques. So today, even the traditional canopy spindle planting that we were recommending to plant by three by 12, our standard recommendation, our extension recommendation today in flat ground is three by 11. Uh, it's also managed with short pruning techniques and, and the use of mechanical pruning to keep this very tall to the uh, narrow canopy. So if for any person that is still don't see or understand what I'm trying to say, how we move from long pruning to short pruning is what I'm saying there in the left, we're not trying to keep a canopy like that anymore. We're trying to keep the same planting des density that you have there, put, but something a little more organized in a single stem with two, three or four apples coming from those short fruiting units, instead to have four or five or six apples hanging from those long uh, fruiting units. And everything is in pursuit of, of improve the light distribution pattern in that 2D canopy, where it's a 2D canopy vertical, or it's a bi-axis, or it's a cordon, with any, or it's any kind of thing that you can start doing, uh, definitely you start grafting, um, kind of all plantings that are not working with you. Um, you should think about the, the grafting in some way with it's a significant amount of uh, plasticity with ambrosia that you are masters there. So you have a great opportunity to learn through, through that. So what were those issues we should, should renewal? Uh, so a few years ago, uh, we started noticing a low renewal rate of pruning cuts in, in these low vigor cultivars, especially on one that is even weaker than honeycrisp, that is New York one. 
So this negative effect was even more pronounced when we grow and the pruning crew tried to leave a perfect bevel or dutch cut is the way how we were pruning in the past by leaving more surface wood at the bottom, less at, at, at the top. This almost perfect bevel or dutch cut was almost always very short. You tend to, 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 to make it very short like in that picture. In, and in some extreme cases, we saw some untrained pruning crews leaving almost no surface wood for renewal, whether at the bottom or top of a, a bevel cut. So you, we, we couldn't afford to be in, in that situation. This situation of um, almost completely flushing out the wood for renewal and ended up producing long section of blind wood along the trunk without the possibility of any renewal. So. That is uh, in the worst case scenario to be this kind of very negative effect of repetitive pruning with short, almost absent stuff and without successful renewal year after year was more pronounced in this low vigor cultivar, like I mentioned before. So when we switch, when we start trying different things, when we start the living stuff of three or four finger lengths, that we call it to make it easy for the pruning crew to understand like that is more or less a minimum of two or three inches. The rate of renewal was increased dramatically uh, by more than 50 to 60 percent in the worst case scenario with these low vigor cultivars. And, and that what made the, the, the concept be born in, in, through this kind of situation, at least in our region, uh, that we start calling it the three or four finger pruning concept. Uh, so today we use this kind of four finger pruning concept to secure the renewal uh, in a in a low vigor apple cultivar that was the initial challenge. But at the same time, um, as we start using the same pruning concept, uh, we started to really think into diffuse or count the vigor by pulling of the sap in, in situation where we have more vigorous cultivars. Now, that I'm going to be discussing later. So that is it's a little more difficult to understand how we can use the same concept or the same principle that I mentioned there in the blue box. But the goal is is the different. It's a different goals, whether it's for a weaker cultivar or a more vigorous cultivar that for us have been Fuji, for example. For for us have been very difficult to do Fuji under our current conditions. But it's very applicable to almost any situation where you have more vigor than in honey crease. And, and you want to settle the plant in a different way to be able to use that vigor on your own benefit. Another way, so another way, I'm going to be talking about this later, uh, about this blue box, because that is the, it's a very new concept in the way how we are pruning today. But also I want to give you the opportunity to see that you can learn a lot also through grafting. As uh, you start grafting, whether it's top working or side grafting or beaver grafting, that is the most kind of advanced way to do grafting today in these old plantings, you can really learn a significant amount of managing those new stems, those new single leaders in some way. So we have been learning a significant amount through tra for training, um, for pruning, whether it's with a two leader, a top grafted tree like in the left, or a side grafted situation with one leader uh, leaving the top in, for the nursing foliage or cutting the nursing foliage right away the first year. There are different ways. You can also do a two stem tree from side grafting. That is also a possibility where you put one stick or where you put two stick, even from one stick. I have been able to produce beautiful orchard with two stem from one single stick. So that is possible. And the beaver uh, grafted situation that we have been able to do three leader, four leader tree. This is a lot more challenging. We are still learning, but I thought that could be the right moment perhaps to explain um, and introduce to you guys, um, thinking that you have the access to Ambrosia. You know Ambrosia very well, perhaps. And Ambrosia is the poster child for that kind of work. Uh, where uh, you you need that plasticity and you need those very narrow um, uh, single stems through grafting because with ambrosia you need to put a very very close more than any other perhaps the cultivar that we have there. Another way that we start learning uh, how to prune a little different it was uh, when we start changing the traditional way how we grow the trees in the nursery. 
So when we start moving from the standard, the two year tree, that is the traditional tree that we plant the rootstock and we cheat bad in the summer and we grow the sign wood in the second year, we really start thinking how we can grow through the tree in, in the nursery, whether it's a two year cycle, a three year cycle. Um, in Italy, we spend a significant amount of, with the three year cycle that is to the right, where we plant the rooster, we should but traditionally, but instead to take out the tree in the second year, we let, we leave the tree for a third year in the nursery without hitting the tree, without doing the canip cut that we have been doing in the past to produce those long feathers. We don't hit it, we don't do the canip cut at the end of the second year, and we leave it that year just to grow and produce a more calm tree. But in the case of the two-year tree, we really start with a bench graft rootstock in the first year. We grow that bench graft and we leave it for a second year in the nursery without hitting the tree. That is what we mean by leaving the tree, growing the tree, growing the tree a little more. One more season definitely is a mini trellis. It's a concept that you have to bring to be able to support those trees and leave for us due to the the snow conditions and the wind and everything that we want to do in, in the nursery to have a very straight tree. So here I have the figure that where I really kind of will show you the two systems uh, to be able to range in here and end up producing a more tubular tree, a more calmer, narrower, fruitful tubular tree that is going to give us an instant orchard. One is through the bench graph and you're going to grow through in year two that tree. You're not going to be heading that tree. You're going to have some pruning to be involved at the short pruning techniques, like what we are talking about in this presentation. And you're going to end up with a very narrow tree like I'm showing you there. The second way, the system two, is the traditional. Uh, you plant the rootstock, you head the rootstock, you let the sign wood grow in year two. But when you let that tree to grow to a year three, you're gonna do some pruning at the base because you got some kind of feathering there. And, um, and you're gonna be able to grow the tree uh, in year three and end up uh, having a very soft tree, more tubular tree with some more, a little more pruning involved perhaps than in the system number one. That is our ideal one by using bench graph um today so pruning in the nursery um to give us this kind of more skinnier taller and calmer tree we are going to be planting more or less between 15 to 22,000 trees per acre in the nursery or rootstocks or bench graft and seem to be the ideal kind of planting density to grow short side branches at least under our soil fertility situation our management so we ended, up, we ended up with that kind of tree instead of long feathers, especially in the lower part of the tree. Also, I brought there that any feather produced in the first year, should, we, we are cutting back those one to a short stop of three or four finger lengths at the beginning of the second year. So that is the way how we start bringing this concept, even from the nursery. But also it's a concept that you can incorporate even in, in, in the graph tree situation or even in the year of planting where you can even start doing something very nice from from the beginning uh, even with a whip perhaps so a two-year growth through strategy this is one of the first ones in uh, trees that were produced i just want to show you this is at the end of the summer of year two i just want to show you the results of the very skinny narrow tree uh, with a mini trellis yeah, you can, that you can see there. And you should be able to see the piece of the bench graph that is there. I don't know if you can see that piece. That is the bench graph. That is the bench graph. That is the tubular tree and all the pruning that have been done that summer to end up with something very narrow like we have in that tree. So this, this tree, we're doing the pruning just because we want to buy out the first four or five inches with a couple bud, flower buds um, in the nursery phase. This is one of the first ones. It's a three year grow through a strategy where we let it go one more year with this kind of mini trellis that you can see there, very narrow prune in the middle, um, very beautiful trees that we call the instant. They are ready to start producing fruit even in the first year of planting, but sometimes we 
with the fruit and we want to just secure the final growth that we want in, in the orchard and we crop then in the second leaf. So this is some of the detail of pruning and the length of stuff, uh, whether it's in the dormant season or in the summer. Here I, I have this video that I'm trying to show you the flower buds and looking for flower buds to show you that that is the regrowth that you see there in more green, in, in a light green, is the regrowth that we got um, after the season. And some of the buds are there like that one at the end uh, in the view that you can see there. So this is another situation here. We kind of, kind of were a little late about the pruning of the feathers in the nursery, but uh, that is the situation. This is before the pruning and just walking in the nursery uh, with the mini trellis already there. Uh, we're gonna prune those feathers that you see there. So by the end of, by early September, the same, nurse, the same nursery, what I'm showing you there is the flower buds that we're trying to, to get in those short fruiting units, the initial fruiting unit in the way how we're gonna grow the tree later in the orchard. So this is just to show you some kind of mini tree, mini trellis um, that we have developed different idea by the growers, but basically is to show you that perhaps we're not going more for the traditional tree, for the three-dimensional tree. We're no in, in this case it's even more extreme. This is a canip tree there. I show you the cat and the long feathers because in reality we are trying to transition uh, to something more two-dimensional that you can see there in the right picture, something more simple, more tubular, short feathers started from, from the beginning. To be honest, this planting, those trees that you see in the picture to the right, those, those are, were not, uh, those trees grown through, grow through is, those are highly, were highly feathered trees, but we start pruning in year one removing the thing that shouldn't be there and we just leave the thing that are cow that are soft that are going to work for us for the kind of can canopy that we are looking for so so this kind of canopy the kind of transition of course uh is um kind of easy to start doing more mechanical pruning it's more soft it's not so forced it's not so hard in the plant uh we really can adapt mechanical pruning very easily uh as we keep that the canopy get mature. So here I'm going to bring a little bit of pruning of young orchards uh, and show you a little bit of the use of the longer pruning stuff in weak and more vigorous apple cultivars. Um, and again, it's the same picture that I was showing you there. They are in letting you know that it is a honey creek planting on G11, that is the first leaf. And definitely it's a tubular skinnier instant tree. You can see my four fingers there at the base. Those even the stabbing that we're doing is even longer because we try to leave a little longer the stabbing at, at the, initial, uh, the initial phase in year one. And we can try to do a little more tubular, a little more narrower, closer to the trunk as the tree start growing. So at the beginning, we start at the bottom, we start a little uh, thicker kind of wider, uh, but we're not really in, pers in pursuit of trying to have a conical canopy. That's not, we want to have a vertical canopy, canopy anyway, but we start, we try to start a little uh, wider. So to keep that kind of fruiting units a little more exposed to the light when the trees are going to be more mature later. So this is the second leaf situation in honey crease. There you see the first cut or even, even the second cut or even the third cut in some situations in honey crease where we are trying to bring the flower buds closer to the, closer to the trunk. And there you can see a little close, kind of the, the, the first cut or even the second cut um, and how we try to bring and settle that tree through auriculture, through the right timing, uh, and not just to prune and let the tree explode. We, we try to find the right angle of the feathers and the right timing for the pruning cut. In the summer, perhaps we're gonna try to do that after the summer solstice. So if we bring any kind of mechanical pruning or any kind of intervention with the feathers during the season, perhaps we're gonna start doing this tipping 
after June 24, by the end of June, early July, um, perhaps for your situation. But think about the summer solstice. I, I feel that June, by the end of June, I think so uh, make a lot of sense to try to induce some kind of uh, feather with fruitful bud closer to the trend. This is the most difficult thing to do. This is Fuji on G11. Uh, where we are really trying to bring the flower back closer to the trunk. This is not easy to do. If you let it go, if you don't do any pruning, if you don't do any bending, definitely you're going to find a plant like this. Very basitonic, very tip bearing cultivar. It's going to try to explode and grow a significant amount of wood. And by doing this, um, in a more highly vigorous cultivar by doing living longer stuff, you can bring back the flower bud, uh, the flower bud closer to the trunk. And when you have the flowers and once you have the fruit closer to the trunk, to the trunk, the plant is way more soft and it's, it's working for you in, in the long term. You're not gonna be fighting the Fuji plant or any highly vigorous cultivar uh, if you start doing this kind of work, this kind of stabbing. So definitely we're not pruning short or stabbing too short or the bevel cut. We're just going with a lazy cut or a dirty cut. In that case, the crew was pruning with that kind of angle, but definitely we're trying to leave a longer stuff of at least two or three or four fingers in, in, in weak cultivars. There is another one picture that I showed uh, before on how we're managing this kind of stuff and how we're trying to bring the fruiting units around the trunk, how the trees start to mature. So this is a slide just to, to emphasize the kind of the concept of the benefit of using a longer than a shorter stuff for renewal pruning. That could be in some cases two or three, one to four finger length. It's gonna depend on the situation of how the cultivars are behaving under your own condition of light and vigor and soil fertility. But for a weak cultivar, okay, you have to secure the renewal of at least one shoot per staff because you want to prevent the blind wood sections along the trunk and at least giving a, a four finger length for honey creep for us is working because at least it's giving us one shoot. If we leave it shorter, sometimes we don't get what we want. If you leave it too short, you're gonna be blind there. That is the situation for a weak cultivar. But in the case of a more vigorous cultivar or more vigorous growing conditions or anything that you, you're, you lost the control of the dwarfing effect by planting too deep or, or anything, a short stuff, uh, we know in a highly vigorous cultivar is gonna develop a too vigorous long shoot in many cases, and you lose that fruit in June. As soon as that thing go crazy, too long, too thick, too vigorous, you are gonna have to, you're losing that. You cannot control that unless you do some kind of limb, limb uh, you manage the fair below the horizontal, but we are not doing that. It's, it's, it's too expensive, too time consuming. It's better to, to start with a, with a, um, with a longer stuff, like I mentioned, the longer stuff is gonna renew perhaps two or three shorter shoots that are gonna compete with each other. Uh, they're gonna end up being shorter and sometimes even with a flower at the tip in, in the case of any tip bearing cultivar. But once you have the tip, once you have the flowers at the tip of those shoots or one or two or three shoots, that structure is gonna stay there more calm and gonna be more fruitful. So that's why I'm mentioning there the multiple shoots by stuff are gonna diffuse the energy and are gonna come sooner. So they're gonna become more fruitful and closer to the trunk. The fruit is gonna be closer to the trunk and you're gonna be able to manage a, a very narrow canopy. This is another example. This is another way for you to see in a grafted situation like in the left. The picture in the right is just to emphasize that for summer pruning, mechanical pruning, you, 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 just, you, you should just be cutting one year all shoot. You shouldn't be cutting big wood in the summer. If you're cutting big wood in the summer in, with the mechanical pruning, it's something not right in the canopy structure 
because what we should be cutting in the summer is just one year shoots. Okay, in the left is the manual summer cut in a grafting situation where we are removing that, we're doing that kind of one year shoot because we're really trying to bring the bud like we do in the nursery. In the nursery, we're doing this kind of pruning because we want those bud closer to the trunk in a grafted situation in those stems. We also want to do that kind of practice through pruning, through late pruning after summer solstice. If when we were doing the mechanical pruning in this situation, we, we were also doing the summer, the manual summer pruning to be able to induce and have a very narrow uh, tree. So again, it's the same video that I showed you before. They are combined, it's just to emphasize that these uh, practices of pruning practices are very applicable also in the nursery that we are doing it in the nursery and bringing the trees in fl flower induced to the orchard or you can do it through grafting or in the one year tree in the orchard um, but it should have been done before if you are able to grow your own trees or some of you here I'm gonna switch a little bit. This is just a couple of things. I have an entire visual guide, Kendra, that perhaps I can share with you that I developed in the past for pruning of young and semi-young high density apple plantings. It is, it's, these are more basic things that we were bringing to the industry uh, and where we were removing this case or bringing the idea of using the three T's pruning rule that I have called here. That is, is the remotion through pruning, even after planting, or anything that is or too narrow, or too long, or too thick. So if the pruning crew starts thinking about the three T's and trying to identify post from post, if we had 10 or 12 trees, perhaps are gonna be two or three trees that some of them are behaving like this. They were not pruned in the nursery that they need to start in a different way to produce a more balanced tree. So anything that is gonna be or too narrow or too long or too thick compared with the main stem, the trunk had to be removed. And of course you had to leave a longer stuff. That is what we're doing. It's a very quick pruning. You had to review your trees after planting this year, even if you just bought a highly feathered tree, you're gonna have to remove something if you are already planting, even a three by 12 or three by 11, is not a good thing to start with too long fair for the kind of horticulture and pruning practices and fruit quality that we are in pursuit today for this kind of investment. This is more extreme situation. Uh, the two or three minimal pruning cuts at any given time. I think so. I don't. I don't do that. I think so. It's up to any kind of cut that you have to remove. Anything that is there that is not working for me for the canopy that I want to have in this situation. This is right the issue. But I know uh, if I want to do high density in red delicious, I'm not going to let anything to become too dominant too soon. And any, I'm going to try to leave every something open, something flat. Okay. I, I don't know if in the in the past I had mentioned that we're in pursuit of filet de mignon. All that should be filet de mignon is the concept that I try to bring to the pruning crews to avoid the doggies, the big pieces of wood in, and, and fill the, the, that row with, with this kind of fruit and units, very fruitful, very filet de mignon that have been helping the pruning crew to understand what we're trying to do. Here is uh, the pruning detail for a top in the case of for a, for a gila that is underperforming that we are trying to accelerate the growth and the development of the right fruiting unit that we want. And um, so I uh, just keep trying to identify anything that is too dominant. In, in Galen reality for us to leave one or two finger length is, is okay. I think so Gala is gonna give you the renewal anyway. And it's fine if you go with this kind of pruning in a Gala tree. Uh, I think so the Gala is the only exception to the rule uh, of the three, four uh, uh, finger length concept is gonna give you always most of the time going to give you the, the shoots that you want but anything that is becoming too dominant you have you almost have to accelerate the renewal pruning especially when you are in year one two three four when you're growing the tree you can grow the tree but very smart pruning 
that is what we are trying to 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 do here you're trying to balance the tree anything that is going to become too dominant you have to take it out because above and below as too bigger of feather is going to affect the normal feathering of a spindle tree that is trying to grow and give you exactly what you need. So you have to identify anything, especially when you're growing the tree very soon, very smart and take out that wood. It's not minimal pruning. It, it, it's that you have to be able to identify and tell your pruning crews what shouldn't be there and why shouldn't be there so you can get the right texture of rooting units as you can start seeing in the tops of Gela. Okay, that's what I'm trying to emphasize there. I know I'm going too far, but I want to leave some time for, for questions at the end. Um, this is uh, Fuji. Fuji is the most complicated, but we can do it if we are very um, we had the discipline to really identify those feathers that are becoming too, too dominant and you need to take it out. That's the only way that you're going to be able to settle uh, a more highly vigorous cultivar in this case, like Fuji. Okay, so it's the same. Perhaps we should have pruned that one that is there, but we leave it. It's okay with the video already three, four, five, six pruning cut per tree is enough for what we need, but we were able to open the tree to leave it open, to leave it more horizontal. Another thing that is, is, is good for the pruning crew, perhaps, is to use the same four fingers, but to use the four finger separation rule along the trunk to be able to make it easier for the pruning crew to understand where they should be taking out anything that, in some cases, is the same diameter wood, okay, but to organize your thought, your mind for the pruning crew, if you are able to, to come out with this spindle situation or shoots uh, in an order of four to five finger, is what you need at the end when the tree is mature. You don't need more than 15, 18 to 20 fruiting units for this kind of plantings, for, for this kind of density that we are having. So that led you to remove wood that shouldn't be growing there, and it's gonna help you to grow the tree even faster. But you need to have some rule to be able to leave some of those spindle feathers that are being produced naturally by the tree um, and, 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 and remove any kind of too vigorous wood right away. This is another situation. This is the way how you can be growing the gela. Uh, this is the top of that gela at that particular year. And gela uh, top is the poster chart for this Samano feathering at the terminal. So gela top tend to produce too many shoots. Okay, and you have to have the discipline to be able to identify and remove and single the leader and prune two or three shoots below the rain and always leaving a staff. Uh, like we have in talking. So this is before and after pruning. So we're looking for that number three after pruning, very soft. That's the kind of tree that we're looking for to grow in this situation. We, we don't want anything that is gonna influence the natural development of those feathers below or above uh, that last ring of grow as you grow the tree. So you do that in year one, in year two, in year three, as you grow the tree with a very narrow top. So we're looking for number three there. So that is the kind of thing that we're looking for after the pruning, leaving a single fine narrow gala top after pruning and for almost for any cultivar. So to finish, now I just want to show you the sequence of perhaps the most complicated thing that we have come out with this bigger grafting approach, uh, where we start with three sticks. Uh, we start doing all the management of those uh, new cyan wood. We cut the trunk the following year. We have a protocol for year one, for year two. This is very, it, it's more challenging, okay? So it's not that I, I, I'm telling you, hey, do it right away. No, you, we need to communicate, hopefully we can, transfer more information, uh, but it's, it's doable. 
but it's not so easy. You have to pay a little more attention and be a little more patient uh, with the new shoots, the new sign wood that you're trying to develop there. So that is year one, year two, the, the way how those trees were in the summer in 2021, those are the same trees. In February of 2020, those are the same trees in April of 2022. And uh, when I took this picture this year, this is February 2023, and we're able to, to produce a very soft, soft texture, very short fruiting units along those, uh, along, along those tree stems. So um, if possible, but it requires significant amount of attention to detail and good timing and good auriculture, a uh, re-engineering. Uh, you can see we put new posts, taller posts to, make, to get the most of the productivity that we can get from this kind of old plantings. Uh, you can still see there the pieces of trunk from the old uh, orchard, from the old trees that are still there uh, in the wire. Uh, that have been there in that orchard from the beginning. And that's what you are seeing. Those are the pieces of trunk that were completely going through the, the, the wire. That's why you see the, those kind of things there. So with that, that is my last slide. Um, I just want to emphasize how important for me to don't let any big wood. So that way I had that round circle showing you one pruning cut or two pruning cut in that tree. And thank you, thank you. And hopefully we have time for, for questions. I think so I did this in 40 minutes. Thank you so much. Great, that was wonderful. Thank you so much, Mario. Um, and <laughs> we're, I was kind of busy admitting people at the beginning and I forgot to give you a proper uh, introduction there, but I think uh, uh, most people know that Mario is a is a specialist with the Cornell Cooperative Extension Program, um, specifically the Lake Ontario Fruit Program. So we do have time for questions. Um, I guess the best way to do that would maybe to um, you want click me on to the ray. You want me you to want stop sharing? No, no. Is they sure? I guess in, unless oh. someone has a question about a photo you showed, right? Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. We, I, I can leave it here. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, so I think Cody had a question there. If you want to go first. Hey guys, uh, Jason from Wayward Farms. Mario, we are making the transition from long pruning to the short pruning method. Yes. Um, what, I guess, what sort of tips would you give us um, to see that be successful? Um, I, what is the original planting of those orchards? Are you, uh, those are planted at three by 12? Three by 12, yeah. How much big wood do you have uh, at this moment? You have, th th those are very bushy trees, canopies? Yeah, I would say from like the three foot wire to the five foot wire, we've got some- Big uh, ones? big ones that you know the size of your thumb and we're, we're taking those out uh yeah. as renewal yeah 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 so um if these are mature canopy um and you are already with the with a good tree height one thing that um if, if we go if we're very impatient with the transition or what we're trying to make if we're very impatient and we prune too much that is going to have an impact in the flower bud density that we're going to get or we are going to start producing. So one thing that could help you is you're already there with the good growth and the trees are healthy and you have lead tissue analysis from last year and you are right there. Hey, don't, don't, don't use too much nitrogen. Let mother nature to do the mineralization uh, of any 1% organic matter that you have there. If you have one or two, remember, through mineralization, you're gonna get 12, 15, 16 pounds of actual nitrogen and a mature canopy that what need. Don't, they, the apple tree don't need so much nitrogen, okay? You're already at 2%, even in a honey crease site, uh, you're at 
nitrogen in the lead, you are healthy. Anything that go below 2%, 1.8, 1.9 in honeycrete, you're gonna affect return bloom. Okay, so that, that is the tricky thing, but I see, so you kind of go too aggressive. Uh, perhaps you need to, sh uh, perhaps if you have too much wood by leaving longer stops, uh, perhaps you can renew the wood, but perhaps if you have too much vigor, you can produce too much new shoots, and perhaps some of them need to be flushed out or shortened, so you can really have the right density that you need. Okay, so I know saying that depends on the size and, and the plant and the, the density of the foliage in that area, but sometimes perhaps you need to clean and perhaps you're gonna need in some cases to flush it out or make it very short instead to try to have the explosion or shoot all over to you and making the thing even more confusing for, for the pruning crew. That, that could be one thing. Um, if you can, uh, I think so, if, if, if you have Gila, try to step back, try to do this stabbing back that we have been doing for Gela. You know, like I, I didn't mention about how we prune Gela with the stabbing back technique for, for mature canopy, but try to step back anything pending, anything that you can shorten back, perhaps it's gonna work for you. Um, there are a few more things that we could do in the canopy, but I, I just wanna leave it there. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. You can send me a picture to Kendra or something if, if you, so to understand more your situation, perhaps later if you want. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great, guys. Appreciate that. Yes. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Yeah. Any other uh, questions? Also, if you're not sure about the raising the hand feature, you can also just unmute yourself and ask a question. Yes. Hopefully not too confusing. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to confuse people. <laughs> Hi, uh, Lee Everett here. Um, Hi, Lee. I have a question about varieties that tend to have longer, kind of ropier branches, so the, the Cortlands or the Ginger Gold. Um, is there anything different you have to do on those varieties? No, no, I see, especially Cortland being a tip bearing old fashioned, you're going to bring those shoes closer to the trunk. So you're going to make it more narrow if you start bringing this kind of concept to your pruning, you know? So any tip bearing cultivar, you're going to be able to use that shooting, that energy to shoot out closer to the trunk. So you can do that. You can do that with the Macintosh. You know, if I could have been here 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when we were doing high density, and doing a spindle long fruiting unit with, with Macintosh cultivar, we could, we could also settle those kind of more vigorous situation through this kind of pruning. So yes, I, I, I wouldn't bring something more to that to those kind of two cultivar, ginger gold and, and cortland, you can do it like that also. So it's a similar four finger yeah. kind of technique and- Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Any comments on the density of the Cortland planting and stub length, Mario? Like what kind of density are you talking um, about, Lee? We, no, traditional three by 12. Um, a traditional three by 12 that we were filling the canopy through a longer pruning technique with kind of longer pending wood. We are just trying to make it a little more stiff. Um, so light penetration and porosity can be improved. So at three by 12, we are also doing that in a three by 12 plant. And definitely for the first question, if he's transitioning at a mature three by 12, you have to try to leave a little wider at the bottom, uh, but without really thinking to 
keep those canopy fully uh, conical, okay, is you bring mechanical pruning to the system later. Um, if you, if your intention of transitioning at this moment uh, through from long to short pruning, you should be thinking how you're going to keep the canopy uh, in that way in the long term, and you should start thinking about mechanical pruning also. That is complementary. It's not the solution. It's complementary. As you bring mechanical pruning and with the right kind of uh, wood, wood inside the, the 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 tubular tree that I have been trying to to tell you, uh, you can move manual pruning details to the next level. Okay, uh, as you bring the two approaches to pruning, your manual pruning is improved tremendously tremendously through the through time, as you keep a more narrow canopy through mechanical pruning also. Okay, it's no mechanic because that was a big kind of uh, learning process for me or journey, I should say. Perhaps I thought that I could bring mechanical pruning completely to the entire system and forget about manual pruning and, of course, cleaning in the in raw space. Like, in no way that you kind of clean that mechanically, but it, but I thought I could move away from, from manual uh, pruning. And no, it's not that the case. Like once we start using mechanical pruning massively here in high density plantings, uh, we can really see the the pruning crew can do a better job of precision pruning. So here we didn't even talk about precision pruning and counting and all the things that we're trying to do, but your precision pruning uh, it's improved tremendously now as we delay the final pruning cut decision, especially for honeycrease and Fuji at that time. So I still I have a significant amount of honeycrease acreage that we haven't touched. Okay, we don't touch, we touch honeycrease and we touch Fuji at the end. We don't never go with precision pruning early in the dormant season. That is too risky for us. We need to see the flower bud density of that canopy. We don't do bad analysis in the lab, like the, the, the big boys in Washington, they do. They have people, they have the infrastructure, they have a, a sampling protocol uh, of cutting in the dormant season and knowing the, the bud fertility in that canopy. In, in our case, it's different. We take out the big wood, of course, during the dormant season, we're gonna take out the big doggy, the big, big wood that shouldn't be there, of course but we wait to make counts and we count early, early pink. As soon as we can see that flower bud, it dies vegetative or floral, we are gonna make the count. And that is the moment when we impose precision pruning in this kind of situation, especially for, for Fuji and for, for honeycrisp. Okay, so, so what I'm trying to say about mechanical pruning is that Hey, if I was doing mechanical pruning post harvest in November, or if I was doing mechanical pruning now in uh, January or February, when we bring our H2A crew for this kind of honeycrisp block, the, 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 this orchard are fully organized, they are very pristine, very vertical, and they go just inside to count and make very smart pruning cut decision with short loppers, you don't need those big loppers. No, you, you need just short loppers to make very precise count or even spur extinction if needed when you have too much going on there. But that's what I mean by that you really bring another level of precision pruning, especially for this kind of cultivars when you have a very pre-established canopy. Uh, through mechanical pruning in the dormant season, where you did a post harvest, where you did it in the dormant season, but you are coming now at this moment, we're still waiting, growers are still calling me, say, Mario, watch, can we wait a little more? Can we organize the, the pruning cut decision so we can make the counts early at pink to understand what we have there? Can you see that? Can you understand that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, 
Yoas had uh, his hand up. Do you still have a question, Yoas or Lisa? Did you want to unmute yourself? I can do that. I can unmute. Um, oh, no, I can't unmute you. Um, OK, maybe we'll get Natalie. Or can type in the chat or something. Mm -hmm. OK, maybe Natalie, do you, do you have a question? Yeah, it's Sam here. Um, oh. <laughs> No, it's fine. We're all in the same room. Uh, I've been called worse. Um, Mario, if you got a, a tree from the nursery that's kind of weak to start with, on your second leaf, uh, what kind of pruning would you do to that tree to try to kick boost it again? Um, so perhaps we can, um, perhaps we, we had to defruit. You know, we're going to have to defruit those trees again in the second leaf. Um, if they are too short. Uh, okay, let me talk about the defruiting. I, I wouldn't go too crazy about the blossoming versus early defruiting. Okay, so that window, when you're managing a lot of acreage, don't go too crazy thinking that you had to remove the flower too soon to get the maximum. Uh, uh, effect on brain vigorization of the of the of the vegetative side uh we have done it we have measured that and there are no so much different you start the blossoming or you do early defruiting until around four six six millimeter as if you really delay the defruiting beyond a nine ten millimeters there you're going to have a more negative effect in what you are trying to pursue by the blossoming the plant, the plant and take it out all the uh, reproductive part. Okay, that could be one of things. So you have a window there, okay, from the blossom to early defruiting, and you can get it done, and you're gonna get the benefit. The other one is perhaps you're gonna have to use some plant growth regulator at the tip if you have the the discipline to really start kind of working with the tip just with the tip with a promaline program or a, or a max cell program to the tip. If you really want to shoot elongation and grow your tree, I would recommend you to use more promaline than max cell. Max cell is gonna give a little more feathering. What you really want is vertical growth. If those three, those orchards are planted close, uh, if you are already below 36 inches in the in row space, and if you are around from 28 to 32, you just need those kind of more tubular trees. So I would really concentrate in vertical growth. Okay, no, don't don't and and that should be fine for what you are trying to do. The plant is gonna feather anyway later. Nitrogen is another one, of course, but um, you have soil fertility there. I imagine. There, what, what you have is a short growing season and a cool soil temperature. So, root primor there perhaps doesn't start pushing too soon, too early in the growing season, just because you have all that water coming from underneath in some way. So, we can fight soil temperature. You know, we have to be patient mm -hmm. with, with that. Yes. Um, so, related to that question, too, any tips? with pruning to try to help a tree in its second leaf get to that top wire? To, okay, you have any kind of too long, too thick, too narrow feather, like I mentioned with the three trees, you're gonna have to take that one out. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one, that's the rule that you should be imposing. Okay, you can stop everything also, <laughs> you know, but I don't, uh, it's the stabbing of everything you can do it but you need to be able before you do something like that you have to identify something that is already open that is already settled that is going to work for you anyway okay so don't you, the, the full stabbing of everything you need to see first what is open what could settle what is going to work for you because you're going to need a break later because you are going to invigorate the tree a lot and you're going to need flower bud density later. So leave something there that is gonna work for you in the future. Okay, but at least, at least 
anything that is the treaty is anything that is of too long or too narrow or too thick that is there should go out and leave a, a little longer stuff. Okay, so we had some questions in the chat. Um, so Yoas said, I was wondering about cutting the spring versus summer pruning, but he answered the question. The next part was doing more than the big cuts this spring. Um, doing uh, for, for, for growth, for tree growth? Should you, you mean, should we be doing more than the big cuts this spring? Is that what the question's asking? Mm. I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm, okay. So I, I, I'm convinced if um, you have to take what you need to break the pruning rule once in a while. Okay. We don't try to remove more than 30% of the flower bud density through pruning, but sometimes you have underperforming trees in a block in a 20 to 25, 30% that need to be treated hard sometime. And they can catch up with the rest of the soldiers. So I had that kind of philosophy with the pruning crew that sometimes I cannot justify to have a honey creep block that had to be biannual. If some trees are not behaving, we're gonna treat them different. If some trees are not growing, uh, the same way than the rest, and they need to be pruned a little harder just because we're going to have to do that. So some situation where you have a lot of uniformity of trees, sometimes those are three or four cuts, uh, but some of them you have to break the rule and sometimes you're going to have to prune a little more. You know, if you want to catch up, if you want to catch up and have the orchard in sync completely, as you keep growing the production system, you know? So, but it, it, but the minimal pruning concept has been very misunderstood for many years here in North, in, in America, in, in, the, in the United States. That doesn't mean that you don't have to be pruning because you can end up with a significant amount of wood when the tree is mature. And there were the moment that you need to start removing wood, especially big wood at the bottom. You know, no, you can grow the tree by taking the right amount of wood, very smart as the tree grow. And that helped the tree to grow and get to the top of the wire even sooner, especially in weaker cultivars, in weaker growing condition areas of the world. Hmm? Great. Um, there was another question in the chat. Can you take off too much wood in one year if we are inspired group? by your wisdom and experience. Yeah, you can take too much, I think so. Uh, but I haven't seen kind of is you're gonna grow the canopy, you're gonna grow the tree, you know, you're gonna grow the skeleton of the tree. You remove too much and you're gonna lose the crop the, or the future crop or the flower bud density that you should have every year as you keep growing. Uh, uh, the orchard by imposing something like that. So you need balance. So in some situation, when we see a canopy that we want to transition, we can get that job done in two seasons or in three seasons instead of one season. That is that the art of the intuition that you have to be able to, to see. Sometimes you are very impatient and sometimes you cut a lot, but if you count, if you try to understand what you have there, if you have enough flower bud density inside of what you are trying to leave, that should be able to contain any explosion of growth, okay? And in the worst case scenario, in the worst case scenario, if I thought that I had enough flower bud density inside the canopy that I'm trying to perpetuate that to live there and the thing explode too much to me uh, due to my more more aggressive pruning style you can freeze the canopy with apogee later if you have to okay you have you can completely freeze the canopy but you have to go very very early with the apogee spray at early pink okay if you don't do that 
and you put 10 Apogee shots later, never going to be the same. Never you're going to be able to contain the canopy volume explosion that you're going to have if you don't go early. So you have that tool. You have that tool to control vigor, but with a PGR, but you, you cannot miss the early timing of Apogee. Great. Yes. Are there, oh, um, Lee, if you get, oh, if you get a single big shoot coming out of a four finger cut, do you four finger from the trunk again or from the point of new growth? Um, in a new, this is a new tree. I don't know if this is a new tree, but when, imagine if, if we stop dormant, Okay, in a in a early in a younger tree, year one or two or three, and you you did the stabbing dormant. Okay, you're gonna have a second shoot that is coming. It's the next phase. That phase, that shoot should be cut again. Okay, if that grower sucking me that that should be cut again, and if you do it the right timing around the summer solstice or later. You should be able to put sun energy in the sec in that section of the second growth that is coming from the from the staff. Can you see that? So you are building the frame. Don't 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 shoot yourself too short. Don't go to because you're making in in two cuts in the dormant cut and the one year shoot that is growing and you just uh, come back to tip it. You can leave the right frame that you need in that tubular tree. If those trees are planted three feet apart, 36 inches, that frame, you can achieve that frame of 16 to 20 uh, to 18 inches from the trunk in the first two or three seasons. And that's it. And that's it. That's what you need there. Okay. And after that, they're going to shoot out. They're going to give you leave, but the fruit is going to be inside. So that second cut should be during um, summer, basically, rather than wait yeah, late, another year late, and late, late yes. later, yeah. But late. not not wait until dormant pruning again. Uh, yes. So okay. in, in the case of the Fuji that I show you there, uh, in some cases we we can start building that situation in in two or three cuts in that in that area. Okay, and if, if we have the length. Of the filling space that we need in that tubular tree, after two or three tippings, we should have enough flower bud inside. If we are doing that in a fruiting unit that is not giving us any flower bud, we start all over again. <laughs> you know, you cannot keep building wood there that is not fruitful. If you have been doing doing that manipulation and the thing is not working for us, and you have just a piece of wood with one, two or even three pieces of wood without flower bud, you go inside and you cut it again and you start the cycle again. Don't fall in mm -hmm. love with the wood. <laughs> huh? The what? Don't fall in love with the wood. <laughs> no, no, exactly. You, you know, exactly. We, can, we can afford. We can afford to have a piece of wood there that is not working for us. That, that is the thing. That is the, the level of intensity with oriculture. You need to be willing to look around and your crew had to be very well trained to identify something that is not fruitful. If something is not fruitful, even though it's not too thick, need to go out. <laughs> you give you have to give it the opportunity to something else to come out there and do it the right way. Okay, I think we've probably got time for, there's one question in the chat and then Euclid has his hand up too. So, um, in the chat, what should be done with leaders that grow fruit buds rather than vegetative buds? Do we cut back to the next strong side shoot or just snip that fruit bud? Uh, I, I like to tip early, early, early on. I like to, if I have flower bud at the tip, I'm going to tip those flower buds. Okay. Uh, if I have flower bud in that section, I'm going to de blossom of the fruit. But especially if I have, I'm gonna walk the row, I'm gonna see those three. If they are really flowering at the top, we should tip that one early on so we can make the the, the shoot selection as, as soon as possible. 
okay? And uh, if we have flower buds uh, coming down, if they, they give us the board shoot, uh, don't wrap those ones, just let those board shoot to develop, to have those shoot. And after that, you tip, you tip number two, number three, number four, below the main shoot that you selected to grow this particular season. But don't wrap, don't do anything because we need those pieces of wood to renew shoot later. So we're not rubbing bud number two or three or four or five. We're just tipping. We're doing that tipping earlier. We're doing that tipping of that, those shoots that are, are potentially are gonna start to compete with the main lead around June 10, June 5th, June 15th. That is the moment where we're cutting those one to two or three fingers length, but no dividing. Um, so I think we've got time for one more question, Euclid. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I was running in the second year, once you've done your spring, spring pruning and uh, you go back after solstice and we do uh, a touch up. Uh, later on in early August, sometimes the tops are growing really well, but uh, even, even then sometimes we'll get two strong uh, branches that have decided to come out uh, of dormancy or whatever uh early august and they're competing with uh, the leader is is it too late to uh to shorten them out or is there a an advantage to leave them there until the next spring because the, the top one is already uh, has grown at least two feet and those two competing ones are almost uh, a foot and a half yeah uh at that time, I say so. If they're gonna, if they're gonna make any trouble for light and color development of the fruit that you're trying to have there, perhaps you can cut back to that length that it take out the extra foliage that you have at that moment late in the summer. But perhaps though, by making any cut like that, those are the first candidate to be removed later closer to the trunk and start all over again in that in that section so when because if we're already here with something too vigorous uh, we can afford that that thing is going to continue growing later anyway even though you don't have the explosion of touching now late in the summer so those are the first candidates that should be removed later so hey if you have, so if you have good fruit coloring and that extra foliage is not killing your fruit for color, perhaps, and you don't have any extra time, hey, leave that thing there, because later you're going to have to take it out anyway. Okay, there's uh, my, my question also was concerning if we cut it, let's say, late August, are we going to encourage the, the top to stay uh, vegetative too late in the, in the fall? Uh, with more reason. Yeah, I wasn't thinking like that, but it's true. You are in that latitude. Yes, you can reinvigorate and, and make that happen. I don't have that experience so much, but is any reinvigoration late could be detrimental for for what for the safety of the tree. Yes, I agree with you. Okay. Okay, well, um, if there are any other questions, you can send them to me and I can send them along to uh, Mario, but I think that was a really great, really informative session, Mario. We really appreciate your expertise and your experience with pruning. And yeah, hopefully we'll get you up here again soon. I, yes, if I can, that could be great. Uh, but thank you for the opportunity, Kendra, to connect with you guys, I, I was there, I don't recall when, but things have been changing and are still changing. So it's good that we catch up in some way, the way how we are still thinking how to do it right. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Great.
Okay, yep, so if any other questions come along, just feel free to email me and I'll send them along to Mario. Thanks everyone. Thank you, thank you.